Welcome back to round five action here at the Quicksilver Pro France. It's been a very busy Sunday morning as we're working out the quarterfinals. Sebastian Zietz representing Hawaii, taking on Kolohe Dino representing the USA. Joe Chappell alongside one of the most successful surfers of all time and Martin Potter watching the opening exchange get underway. Kolohe knifing the first section on his backhand. Floating down the line and now ripping one off the roof. Right into a bottom turn. Wave's not trying to help him out too much, but Kolohe's got the intent to create a big number to start. Yeah, 6.5, uh, which is a good score just to kick things off. Kolohe's backhand, very, very dangerous, Joe. Once his kid gets that rhythm going, once he finds that flow, a couple of quick snaps right there, lightning fast surfing from Kolohe. Interesting that these guys are choosing the left, though, after we've seen what went down. Um, the one that I got the seven on, I actually like completely ran him over and I don't know if you could see, but like it stopped my momentum. And I thought I lost a fin, so I was going for the air and I was like, oh, I hope everything's still there. And I got a good score on that one, but um, yeah, that was weird. A weird thing that happened in the heat, but um, yeah, really happy to get the score at the very end there. And, and I was, yeah, I got that, that opportunity to do something to get the score. And talking about losing fins, I mean, even after that aerial out, out on the outside, you worked that wave the whole way in, did the float on the inside. How crucial do you think that last maneuver was to that score? Yeah, exactly right. Chloe, you know, just keeping busy. Bringing this one through the inside, just trying to get that backup score. This is not going to cut it for him, though, just a 2.50. <clears throat> Once he got to this stage of the wave, realized that he didn't really have too much, so going for broke. 2.50, and then right behind him, Sebastian Zietz. Had a slow start, Joe. It's, you know, not that much time left on the clock. It's 19 minutes, and he's still really yet to, to lock in a good score. You see him just weaving. Nothing really vertical at the moment. Now he starts to find this inside section. He needs to capitalize. And does he? Snaps the tail out and goes down. So 3.43. Irons and going on free surfing trips with Parco. He's just destined for this moment. During the break, Andina went above the lip right in front of Sebastian Zietz. So Chloe needing to back up uh, that 6.50. I think he's done that. I think a very similar wave to Julian Wilson's last wave. So looking for that to go into around about that six point range, which is going to extend his lead, Sebastian Zietz. I think wave selection at the moment has let him down just a little bit. Throwing the tail out there, laying back, just didn't quite pull that one off. So he does have priority. He's given room for Kolohe to split this one up. See Bass just trying to find a steep pocket to work with. Throw some water on that last slash. Still waiting for something really major to develop on the inside. Zietz looking for a, a 9.07. And he'll just keep that motion going. Blows the tail out on the beach. And ends up stepping off on the sand real quick. 11.15. Watch how tough this wave is to ride here. I mean, it's just when it looked like it was going to stand up, it, it sort of backs right off and just doesn't give Sebastian anything to hit. This is when you've got to use all, all your own energy and strength, try and create your own speed, trying to look for those moments. You can see him just stepping on the tail, waiting for it, waiting for it, hoping that it stands up. Doesn't quite stand up again, another flat turn, and then just goes for broke on the end. During the recap, things got interesting in the lineup. Kolohe and Sebastian Zietz found some fun looking lefts to serve. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, it's uh, <clears throat> definitely uh, narrowed the gap right now. Kolohe taking the first wave. This thing just didn't really give him that vertical face you need to get those big scores. Kolohe with a 6-5 and a 6, so that's not going to improve his situation. But then right behind him, Seabass left out the back. And I took off on what looked like kind of an average wave, but then it just kept standing up for him, offering him some beautiful vertical face, snapping through the lip right there. Again, whammo, getting that full rotation all the way back around. Out on the open face, two solid backside maneuvers. 8.27 for Sebastian Zietz. Look at this wave right here. It's uh, such a lucky dip on these left handers. You just don't know what's going to happen. Kind of got to take off on him just in case. And Sebastian Zietz, an average looking wave to start off with, but then hit that perfect part of the bank. Look at this turn right here. Snap, throws the tail out, gets that drifting motion. He'll fade the takeoff. 
Doesn't look like much now, but it might end up growing for him. He's got a section to work with, knives it vert. Goes into a backhand climb, and he has to kick straight out. Paddling back in the lineup now with a minute 52. Hasn't heard what Seabass has gotten yet, so he's gonna surf it like he needs a score. Jamming, snap to start, beautiful rail work in the pocket. Pushing through his points, and you can tell he's feeling the sense of urgency to perform. Trying to create moments for himself without the lip to hit. He'll just get a little gouge on the backhand and step off. 50 seconds remaining, two important numbers to lock in. Looks like we are going to run out of time in round five, heat four. Sebastian Zietz ends up with the high single score, an excellent ride on a day today where it's been hard to come by, an 827 but can't back it up, and Kolohe and Dino gets his first one-on-one -on -one win off Sebastian Zietz this season and moves into the quarterfinals to take on Kai Otten potentially later on today.